Hello, I'm Bethany Hughes. Welcome to Discovery Today, bringing you the latest from the world of science and technology. Now, if you're wondering about this headset, I'll tell you more in a few moments. First, in today's programme, 30 years on from Zeebrugge, the battle to make car ferries safer. The dummy helping doctors save lives in the operating theatre. Why the old World War II ducks are back on the water. And this headset, it's just arrived in Britain. The makers claim it could replace the laptop. Here's what I'm looking at now. I've got a small screen just an inch from my eye. Is it going to be the future of personal computers? More of the headset later. March the 6th is the 13th anniversary of the sinking of the car ferry, the herald of free enterprise. It happened close to Zeebrugge, just off the coast of Belgium. The ship went over in a matter of seconds. For the survivors, the families of the victims and the ferry companies themselves, the controversy over ferry safety has raged ever since. But a British scientist claims it's very simple to adapt the ferries to make them much safer. In 1987, the British ferry, Herald of Free Enterprise, capsized when water flooded into the main bulkhead area. In 90 seconds, she was on her side. A sandbank prevented the ship from turning fully upside down. Still, 193 people lost their lives. We fell down to the other side of the boat and people were falling on top of me. It just happened so quickly and the water came so quickly. As a result, a standard was brought in, stating that newly built ferries have to incorporate more safety features. But it gave the ferry companies until 2002 to improve their older ships. Most remain unaltered. Maurice de Rohan lost his daughter and son-in-law in the Herald of Free Enterprise disaster. Since then, he's been campaigning for 13 years to improve the basic design of car ferries. The Herald went down because the ship was wrongly designed. Uh, it was poorly operated. Uh, people were indifferent to safety. And so I feel that their lives were lost unnecessarily. Modern European ferries built since the tragedy are safer than they were. But most car ferries have a large undivided car deck, which is easy to load cars onto and can hold the greatest number of vehicles. However, it leaves the ship vulnerable if water starts to flood in, causing the boat to lose its balance. A disaster can happen within minutes. This feature remains even in the most modern vessels. Professor Carl Ross believes his scale model can demonstrate how to make the car deck much safer. The design weakness of the conventional ferry is that if you get water on the car deck, it sloshes over to one side and, and causes the vessel to capsize within a few minutes. Just like this model of the Herald of Free Enterprise. A modified version of the vessel shows much greater stability. And you can see how much more stable it is, how much more resistance it's got to capsize. See, it soon bounces back again. And this goes to the passive case. We found that this vessel capsized it took five times longer to capsize than the conventional vessel. The modification is simple. Longitudinal bulkheads underneath a perforated car deck prevent incoming water sloshing from side to side. Professor Ross says his design would cost just two million pounds to fit to older existing ferries currently in use. But the industry remains skeptical. One of the downsides of the scheme is that it might restrict access and freedom of movement on the car deck. Of course, that is one thing that we wish to avoid. Therefore, the measures which we have and are and will be implementing will seek to minimise the operational constraints on the vessel while, I must stress this, maintaining the very high levels of standards to which we have always operated. Professor Ross's idea would reduce the car deck headspace by about half a metre, but he's convinced the companies are missing an important breakthrough in safety. We've more or less found we've got practically um, an unsinkable rural ferry. Thirteen years on, for those who lost relatives in the 1987 tragedy, the fact that the scientific community is still looking for answers is a sign of hope. I think what's encouraging is the fact that people are still thinking about the problem. 
and that they're looking to find ways to improve these ships, which are fundamentally wrong. I mean, they are floating rafts, as somebody described them. Uh, and there needs to be uh, an improvement in standards.